Chapter 1. Prologue. Two Uglies. Prologue. Two Uglies. Every human being had a partner. It wasn't like that from the beginning. That happened after 1999 when the new millennium started. Academics used phrases such as soul connection and foreign companion, but no one truly knew what they were. A chat room opened, and we can now have one-to-one -one telepathic communication with people who lived outside of Earth even though we couldn't even see their faces. No, that's not the only thing. The people said that they were inhabitants of Star Hatter, which is not on Earth and was surprisingly different from Earth. They practiced magic like in old fairy tales. Monsters that are only likely to appear in movies and novels are now alive. Instead of shooting a gun, humankind wielded a sword to get rid of them. Of course, a considerable shock hit humanity. Some went crazy because they couldn't stand the voices of strangers that they hear in their heads, and others began to speculate that Hatter might be another planet somewhere in space. But all of it is to no avail. No one could stop this phenomenon, and no one could find Hatter. Without reason, the chat room soon disappeared. Changes other than telepathic chat rooms came to Earth. Hater's inhabitants lived a very different life than modern Earthlings. Some were court wizards, some were commanders, and some were nobles of demons who were hostile to humans. And from that moment, Earthlings were able to use the powers of those connected with them. Magic, the power emanating from the tempered body, was vivid and deadly. Humanity, of course, did not know why this was happening. We didn't know what to do with that power, but it was clear that we had to gather those who had the ability. The governments of each country created large institutions and embraced those who were capable by dividing them into different qualities and potentials. They received special treatment. It was a belief without any scientific evidence, but many believed that something might be coming to Earth as a counterbalance to all the strange phenomenon. Therefore, competent people were being acknowledged as power representatives to each country. In the process, it turned out that I couldn't smile. Chairman of a large company. Beautiful princess. World-famous sports player. World-renowned people have acquired powerful abilities. It was not a coincidence. Hatter's bad guys were connected to the bad guys on Earth as if they had been pre-woven. It was a filthy world. Everyone with a mouth said, but nothing changed. Nobles are nobles, commoners are commoners, the gold spoons connected with the gold spoons and the soil spoon connected with soil spoons. There were no exceptions. Turning your life around after connecting with a powerful partner was something that would only come true in a dream. All I have left is resignation, and my disappointment is growing. I am Korea's ugly representative, poor Samryu University student, Kong Si Ha. My contractor is Hatter's ugly representative and poor farmer fate. It must have indeed been fate. Sheha, I want to show you. Farming is a huge hit this year. Okay, that would be great, fate. It was lecture time. I attended to fate, ignoring lectures that I didn't understand, grazing my chin and drawing graffiti in the corner of my major. I was listening to the business report of my partner who was talking in a lively voice. Please be more pleased. If farming goes well, the probability of starvation decreases, so you'll be fine too. All earthlings were bound around their necks. It was straightforward. If your partner dies, you will die as well. Of course, the opposite circumstance was also valid. Siha, your world is not starving. I envy you. I am starving too. I don't have the money to buy lunch today. It didn't take long for the facts to come out. And from that moment on, all the inhabitants of Earth and Hatter wanted their partners to live long. There wasn't much that we could do for each other. Then, the knights came out from the castle today. It should not have happened. Don't say anything, okay? My partner didn't give me the power of a bean, but he still helped me. I was free to say any words to fate since he was more stupid than me. That's all for today. Let's study Chapter 3 thoroughly. This way, time can pass quickly. As soon as the lecture was over, I yawned and put the textbook in my bag. A friend came to me stretching. Shahaya, let's go eat. Where? There is a pork cutlet near the door. I answered with agitation. It's expensive there. I have no money. All right, I'll buy the meal, Shiha. Let's go eat it. Really? I could call him a friend and my brother. I was afraid he was going to cancel, so I pulled him 
then left the lecture room and headed to the Chinese house. We arrived in less than ten minutes. I sat in the Chinese house where I saw Powers appear on the small TV. My friend, who noticed my gaze on the TV, looked as well and told me, Oh, there's a magic demonstration or something. Maybe today is that day. Wizards are good. Did fate suddenly awaken as a wizard? It would be more likely that our zone will be given the knight's letter. Of course, most of the students in college had partners with no abilities. Some were hiding their abilities as if they were protagonists of a novel, but most of them were quickly overwhelmed by government officials. It is challenging to hide from other competent humans because they have an unmatched amount of mana. Damn it, it's unfair. This is a magic demonstration in Gwangwaman Square in Seoul. We are with the proud Korean wizard Young Woo Go. The magic to be demonstrated today is arrow baptism. It's a powerful magic that creates dozens of arrows at a time and turns targets into ashes. You can blame yourself for being weak and lacking power, but that's still better than those who have met a wrong partner and died at a young age. I attempted to comfort myself. Then the Jajing Mayan came out and I picked up chopsticks. E. Shiha. Suddenly, the trembling voice of fate trembled to my heart. Uh, what should I do? The night. The night. What's going on? How did you come across those guys? The word night only popped out, but I became extremely anxious. Hatter's class system is absolute. There have been instances where you can lose your life just by opening your eyes incorrectly if you are a class with more than a two-level difference. I'm glad to be alive, but if you're unlucky, arrogant thoughts filled my mind. I lost the chopsticks I had in my hand. Sheha, what should I do? What should I do? So tell me what's going on. Damn. I've been living calmly and well without any trouble. Now what? This is just the same name. It's just the same name. It's still me. Hey. Hey dude. I was looking around strangely. I was to ask why my friend isn't eating. But it wasn't the time. No matter how many times I called fate, the guy did not respond. But the crisis wasn't just happening to fate. Wow. Monster monster. A monster appeared. Breaking news. Something big had happened in the place where the magic demonstration was located. The screen turned into a news studio. Then a window emerged as if it were in front of my eyes. Kong Siha. In synchronization. Human LV3. Strength. Three stamina. Five magic. Zero luck. Zero. Skill none. What is this? My eyes are weird. Siha. Do you see anything strange? No, Shia. Sorry. Sorry. This is bad. This is a real situation. Currently, monsters appearing in Hatter are also appearing all over the world. In addition to this, natural disasters such as sudden landslides and earthquakes in mountain ranges occurred in many areas. So if you are out, evacuate to the safest place. At that moment, the announcer tried to calm down and convey the information. My friend was confused and held me. There was a sound in my head of something being cut off. I was sure that fate was dead. At the same time, the glass window that was covering my eyes, similar to the status window I saw in a game, disappeared like a ghost. I didn't even know who I was. And then I disappeared. The loss I felt at that time was beyond imagination. Perhaps I instinctively realized what it meant. All of this is real. Dear viewers, please act calmly. The authorities mobilized qualified people to ensure the safety of all the people. I chalked. My eyes turned bluish. My consciousness blurred. The Jajing Mayan bowl fell, and I slumped my head at the table. Only then did my friend notice what was happening to me. He was at awe, trying to shake my shoulders, but I was already unable to say anything. The earth seems to be in a crisis of extinction, but I don't know what was happening. All the while I was dying. It was a trivial life. I wanted to live for a long time, but it didn't happen. My life ended insignificantly. It was so funny that I even laughed. Sheha. Hey, stay strong. Wake up. Be mindful. The earth is now in sync with Hatter. It is highly likely that you will suffer in the process of synchronizing with your partner. So viewers who listen to this broadcast will be as safe as possible. Only. Ah, uh, if I were to die anyway, I wish I had eaten Jajing Mayan before dying. That was my last thought as a human. Kong Siha, 
Fate. Goblin LV1. Strength, 7 Health, 9 Magic, 5 Luck Dash. Skill Ebon Heart, Predation LV1. Escape LV1. What is this? And this was my first thought as Monster Kong Siha. Chapter 2. Goblin, 1. Goblin 1. I remember the feeling of dying. The terrible sensation as the stimulus from the body gradually ceases and becomes impossible to move little by little. But what is this? Gong Siho, Fate. Goblin LV1. Strength, 7 health, 9 magic, 5 luck dash. Skill Ebon Heart, Predation LV1. Escape LV1. It wasn't like the status that came to my mind before I died. Human LV3. Poor abilities. And there was no skill. I definitely remembered it. Perhaps if fate didn't die and synchronization was in progress, I would have been a farmer. But now I wasn't a farmer. I wasn't a level 3. I wasn't even human. I was a goblin. A weak monster common in games. With exception to slimes, the goblin was the most prolific threat in fantasy. What is this? The only voice that I remembered was my voice. It sounded awkward when I was talking on my own. After thinking about the reason for a while, I realized this is because the goblin's vocal organs are different from humans. I really became a goblin. My arms raised in the dark field of view were more elevated than a human's. My skin was thick and my nails were sharp. My head was complicated. I had no idea why I became a monster without dying, what on earth was I going to do? and what I should do in the future. But one thing is certain. I lived. I am alive. I thought it was all over, but I survived. I was so happy about that. I wanted to live. Even if I wasn't human, I wanted to live to the end. It was then. Quest generated. You're a goblin. The weakest monster in the giant dungeon Black Palace. You have to eat something else to survive. However, all you can eat is goblins of your kind. Hunt your kin and prove you deserve to live in the dungeon. Goblin hunting zero out of one. Goblin predation zero slash one. Ugh? It was the same as when the status window appeared in front of me. The status window was erased freely, and a glass window written in English with unknown content appeared in front of my eyes. Quest? Dungeon? Cognation? Damn! Who are you? The quest I know is all I got when I played the game. But now, someone who knows my situation is instructing me to do what I have to do with the quest. I couldn't overcome the discomfort and the fear spreading, but I couldn't hear the answer. My voice was the only voice in the cave. Yes, it has spread to the cave where I am now. And beyond that, a crackling sound was heard. I had goosebumps on my neck. There was an enemy that could not be beaten. I could know instinctively. It's not the time to be dissatisfied with the situation. The fear of death came suddenly, and my mind flashed. I thought I should get away fast from where the sound came from. Goblin's body survived death. Moreover, now I do not have any information about where I am. I don't know who is telling me what to do, but having dissatisfaction and fear about it didn't help me. Cognition. Kill goblins and eat them. It was a very sensible instruction unless there was prey that I could fight against and win. I'm hungry. After recognition, there was an unavoidable hunger. I moved as silently as possible and carved the quest in my head. Kill the goblins, eat them. Okay, that's it. The window disappeared. I recalled the contents of the quest in my mind. Then a glass window with the contents of the quest came up in front of my eyes again. I thought about it disappearing, and it disappeared. Then, status. It was a success. My ability was quantified just by thinking strongly, and the status appeared. I cheered myself and looked at what's written on it. Fate must have died. But the name of fate was in the brackets next to my name. The question arose, but it wasn't helpful for me to survive right now, so I left it out. I can't know how high my muscles, stamina, and magic are, because there was only me before the comparison target died. However, since the quest tells me that I am the weakest monster, it was inevitable that it was not a high figure. Next, the skill I was most excited about. A skill is a specialty, and it makes things that you can't ordinarily do possible. It is also the most important thing when playing RPG games. I didn't have any skills before I died. 
but now I have three skills. Ebon heart, predation, escape. I couldn't guess the skill description except for escape. At the moment I thought I couldn't figure out what power these skills had. I had a glass window in front of my eyes again. Ebon heart. <laughs> predation LV1. Any creature can eat anything. Eating restores stamina. Slight toxicity is negligible. It absorbs some of the power of the consumed. Escape LV1. You can run away quickly by consuming mana. Can only be used to escape from battle. It's on hard mode. The description of the one that seemed to be the best, the Ebon Heart, was filled with question marks. Predation appeared to be an excellent ability, but it wasn't a skill that would boost my fighting power right away. The only other skill I had was for running away. What do I do? I'm going to die even if I meet the weakest goblin. At some point, while walking defenselessly, a monster with a small body suddenly appeared from the corner of the road that he had entered. If you reference a game, you can be sure that it is the weakest monster of level 1 from its attire. An attire that only covered the groin with a dirty cloth and armed with nothing else. It was none other than a fellow goblin. Of course, I was dressed exactly like him. Whoa, oh, ah, 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 ah. Ki, I, ah, I. I instinctively clenched my fist and beat him. Was I originally so aggressive? Can't be. I grew up without aspiring to do anything competently. I couldn't study or exercise. If I had also been aggressive, I could not have lived until I was twenty. But now, as if I lived like that all my life, I was ruthlessly throwing a fist at the goblin that I had just encountered. I thought that even I couldn't win against the goblin, but I was wrong. If two parties are equally weak, then the guy with the most desperation wins. My fist hitting him was also painful, but my opponent wasn't able to properly hold his body. It was an opportunity. I desperately beat him with only the thought of surviving. I hit his face intensively and kicked his stomach with my feet. My fists and feet were throbbing and sore, but I didn't stop. Kick, kick, kick. Suck. The goblin screamed and fell to the floor. I ran quickly to see if he would wake up and trampled him on my feet. The little power contained in the skinny feet crushed the goblin of the same skinny body. This was not enough. I stepped on him without rest and looked around. Soon a stone larger than my fist came into my sights. Kick it, kick it. It's a prophet. Just die, you bastard. Go away. I grabbed the stone with both hands and hit it on his head. The goblin screamed to die. The more he shouted, the more anxious I was to hit him with the stone. I hit the goblin until it was no longer making a sound. You gained ten experience. You got one bronze. Goblin hunt one of one. After such a window appeared on one side of the field of view, I barely calmed down and stopped moving. My whole body trembled. I couldn't hold the stone anymore and dropped it. Pant, pant. My breathing was rough. My heart was beating faster than my breath. Looking at the body of the goblin under my body, I just realized that I had killed him. Wook! Nothing was eaten, but something came up inside. My stomach was hot. At the same time, I realized why I was able to attack him as soon as I saw him. It was because my heart was running wild. The ebon heart made me move. It made me violent and impelled my weak arm so that it could hurt the enemy. As a result, my whole body was throbbing right now. There was no skill for fighting, but this skill was the skill that helped me fight. Damn it! I murmured at the end and bowed my head. At the end of my gaze, there was a corpse that was dirtier than the piece of cloth covering its groin. But it's hard mode. It would be a lie if I said that I didn't hesitate. No matter how hungry I was, I didn't want to eat a smashed up corpse. Anyway, I cannot stay in this place. The corner is especially dangerous. I dragged the goblin's body back into the aisle. If I didn't have a hideout, I had to stay somewhere that I could be vigilant at least. The goblin's body was still dirty, but I was hungry. I felt an intense hunger that I never felt when I was a human. It made me crazy. It wasn't like this just a while ago, but the hunger got more potent because of the goblin's body. It seemed that I would die if I didn't eat. Damn it! Only. Ultimately, I grunted one last time, grabbed the less dirty arm, and moved it to my mouth. Woo-wook. 
I pressed its stomach up and shifted it. Then I bit down. I felt the effect of predation skill. Delicious. Even uncooked, the goblin's meat, which would have been shaped like me, was delicious. The goblin's dirty blood and flesh filled my mouth. From the next moment, I lost my mind and indulged in meat. And when I woke up, there was nothing in front of my eyes. No bones, no flesh, no blood, nothing. Chapter 3 Goblin 2 What, what? I recalled what had happened previously and chewed my fingers. Did I really eat an entire goblin? It was outrageous. But my swollen stomach confirmed it. It didn't hurt. Rather than being sick, my throbbing body was wonderful. It proved the explanation of the predatory skill of restoring physical strength. However, I thought I'd absorb some of the victim's power, but it did not seem to have strengthened me. Why is that? Is the goblin too weak? At that moment, goblin predation 1 slash 1. Achieve quest. You got 100 experience. You got 10 bronze. You got one lowest health potion. Level up. Lastly, the moment the glass window appeared, my body was refreshed enough to be incomparable to the recovery of stamina through predation. Why? That was obvious because I leveled up. Has my level risen? I wasn't sure about the experience, but my level was something I could raise. If the predation was a wash, then the level up was a bath. If predation was plain coffee, then leveling up was a venti Starbucks. The feeling at the moment of leveling up was euphoric and addictive. Ah! There was no change in appearance, but I was able to see that I was stronger because of the level up. The status proved it. Gong Si Ho, Fate. Goblin LV2. Strength, 8 health, 10 magic, 5 luck dash. Skill Ebon Heart, Predation LV1. Escape LV1. Muscle strength increased by 1, and physical strength increased by 1. It was a subtle change, but the difference was extremely significant for me. It was hard to describe the feeling of stats rising in an instant unless you experience it yourself. Killing a goblin earns experience, and even completing quests earns experience. If you gain a lot of experience, then your level goes up and you get stronger when you level up. And the stronger you are, the more likely you are to survive. More. I need to be stronger. I will definitely be stronger in the future. I must save. No, I have to live. And to live, I must be stronger. As if someone had read my mind, what I needed now appeared before my eyes. Quest generated. You have done a successful predation. But it is not enough. You have to eat more goblins and develop your abilities. Prove the minimum qualification to live in a dungeon. Goblin hunting 0 slash 20. Goblin predation 0 slash 20. At one time, the figure doubled, but I was not dissatisfied with it. Experience can be earned by catching 10 goblins, and I finished the quest once. This quest will not be different. My life that should have ended has been revived in this dungeon. My body was turned upside down, but I have what I need to survive. Someone who I still don't know is giving me a quest. There are many unknowns, but it does not matter now. The only thing that matters is to survive and, if possible, to be strong. I woke up in the seat. Holding a stone that was easier to lift than before, I walked the passage carefully, but with glowing eyes. I found a goblin hanging around the pathway and looked carefully around first. The goblin was wandering stupidly. There seemed to be no other way beyond the aisle. I have to do it now. I don't know when he will look back. I approached him quickly and carefully. But damn, the moment I almost reached him, I stepped on the stone on the floor. Key? The goblin was frightened and turned. At that moment, I hit his face strongly back and forth with the stones I was holding. Key? The goblin screamed and unconsciously raised his fist. It hit my face precisely. I was so sick that I wanted to scream. But have you experienced it before? The moment the arm contracts, the blow desists. I endured the pain and ran towards him. Key! Stop! He fell on the floor and hit his head sharply. I clenched my fist and knocked him down. He was desperate, but I was also desperate. Then, for a moment, he raised his hand and traced the floor. He was grabbing a stone as I did. Where is it? 
I knocked down his arm and picked up another rock nearby and hit it on his forehead. Kiai, if you can't finish him, you die. Only that thought filled my mind. Again, my heart was racing. Naturally, my hands became faster. I continued to hit down the stone. Ki, ki, ki. The goblin gradually discontinued fighting back at a certain point and eventually stopped. Goblin Hunt January 20th. You gained 10 experience. You got one bronze. Pant, pant. I shook my breath and put the stone down. I monitored the sound I made while fighting and monitored for other monsters. The dungeon was quiet. There were no other monsters. It was a massive dungeon, so he got away with the battle without attracting more monsters. Okay then. I had to drag the goblin and move it, but presently it's in the middle of an open passage. It is a space where you can guard your surroundings. I looked down at the goblin's body. I didn't feel nauseated like the first time. Instead, it seemed to be a nutrient that would heal me. I will enjoy this food. In this way, I started a new life as a goblin. How long has it been since I opened my eyes with a goblin's body? I don't know. After receiving the quest, I killed and ate sixteen goblins. I leveled up to five. Gong Si Ho, Fate. Goblin LV5. Strength, eleven stamina, fourteen magic, five luck dash. Skill Eben Heart, Predation LV1. Escape LV1. Whenever I leveled up, my strength and stamina increased by one. When I ate ten goblins, I gained one stamina. I did not sleep. I wondered why I wasn't sleepy. I couldn't find the next target even though it was quite a while since I ate a goblin. I felt tired from then on and realized it. So far, I recovered my health by predating and leveling up. Fatigue disappeared by restoring physical strength. Sleep is fatal. No matter how vast the dungeon is, if you are unlucky, you will face an enemy. It wasn't once or twice that I felt frustrated and fled. Predation has become an essential skill in order not to sleep. I want you to come out with one. It was a little easier to deal with goblins from the moment L reached level 4. It hurt less when I was hit and I did more damage when I hit. I was becoming more deadly, but it made me more nervous at the same time. Some goblins had a higher level and I might encounter a goblin stronger than me. I had to hunt all goblins carefully unless I knew the level of the goblins in advance. As I quietly stepped into the new aisle, I found prey. I picked up a stone with a very familiar form and approached it carefully. Goblins are dull. Their hearing is excellent, but the other senses were lacking. They lack the so-called sixth sense. But before I could approach him, he looked back at me. My heart seemed to stop. A knife was in his hand. It was coarse and rusted, but it was a knife anyway. Kayap. He laughed. I come to see now that his upper body was slightly more developed, unlike other goblins. I could tell that he was stronger than me. Much stronger. Immediately after realizing it, I threw the stone I was holding on to him and started running. Kyap. Kirp. He was chasing behind me with an eerie sound. I ran desperately and I escaped. Deep inside my body, I was feeling something that was fluttering like a tiny fountain. Maybe my mana was being consumed little by little. My magic was garbage and escape skills do not last long. That's what I thought at first, but I wasn't worried. After I ran out, this time I began to lose my health. There were quite a few times that I recovered my health from predation so that I could have the feeling of stamina. It's good to be able to keep running. But what if that runs out? At that time, I could only wait for death. It's horrifying. I couldn't help worrying, and I suddenly looked back. Fortunately, the distance between the goblin with a knife and me was gradually getting farther. So that's how it works, even if I have the escape skill, I can only use it when I escape a battle. If I keep going this far, wouldn't it be possible to get out of the way if I find another passage twice in this complicated dungeon? Then I can live. A little hope began to appear, but he had one more method that I never thought of. Kiak. It's very annoying. Then at that moment, he nodded as if he was determined. Then he threw the knife at me. It was clumsy, but the blade was aiming at me accurately. Okay. Could not be avoided. It was a miracle if I, who was only desperate to run away, avoided the knife thrown by an enemy with higher physical abilities than me. A knife stuck in my thigh. It wasn't deep, 
but I couldn't afford to stop and pull out the knife now, and it was so painful to run. It seemed like a flame was coming out of my thigh. I sensed that I was going to fall. But what happens next if I fall? I die. That guy will kill me without irresolution like how I killed all the other goblins. It was a goblin's nature. If I fall, I will die. Have I survived hell only to die again in a more pathetic way than when I was a human? I hate this. Cannot die. I must survive. I want to live. I want to live. At that time, the ebon heart jumped vigorously. Chapter 4 Goblin 3 My body and mind were already at its limit, but I kept running. I was running, ignoring my leg that was stabbed with a knife. Pain couldn't slow my steps anymore. Kick? Kiig, the goblin who threw the knife, screamed after me. I didn't know if I could keep running. Cannot be caught. I could never be caught. If I got caught, I would be dead. I sprinted with all my energy. I screamed and broke the passage and entered into a new one. But there was already another goblin there. Damn! He was a weak goblin without a blade. I wish I hadn't been chased. I was confident that I could kill him even in a frontal attack. But I didn't have the opportunity. Even now, it seemed like I could hear the breath of the guy chasing me from behind. I ran past him before he even acknowledged me. Key! I made it! But when I broke the passage again, I couldn't run anymore and collapsed into that position. The shock caused the knife to come out of my leg and hit the floor, making a hissing sound. My blood spilled. It drained my stamina even more. Ha! Huh. It was so painful. I knew I had to run away, but my body couldn't move. I couldn't even take a single step with my skill or will anymore. Both my mana and physical strength hit rock bottom, and blood was still flowing from my legs. Is this the end? Was all of this in vain? Increasingly, my body was losing strength. My fingertips turned cold little by little. It was a pathetic death. All I can do was laugh because it was inevitable. You got a rusty knife. At that moment, the knife that fell off my thigh and rolled to the floor disappeared. I opened my eyes. What did you just say? You said I got it? I definitely heard that. It didn't disappear or go back to the original owner like in a game. It said I got it. Why did it disappear? Why? The moment I asked that a window appeared in front of my eyes. It was a glass window with alternating vertical and horizontal lines. Like a checkerboard, it had three vertical and three horizontal columns. It was salvation to me. There was money, a coarse rusty knife, and at the bottom a health potion. I then recalled that when I first killed a goblin, I saw that it gave me experience and one bronze, but I had ignored it then. Even before completing the quest, I had already acquired the lowest health potion. But I didn't even notice. It was a foolish mistake. I was so excited about the fact that my level went up, that I forgot about it. Like in a game, I had an inventory. Everything I ever got was stored inside it. I didn't even know it was there. While contemplating, my body instinctively reached into the window that appeared in the air. My hand succeeded in picking the potion bottle out of the window and pulled it out. I took off the stopper and drank it. It was sweet. The change took place the moment I consumed the potion. My slowing heartbeat gradually accelerated and warm blood spread to my whole body and healed it. The most surprising thing was the thigh wound. The wound was healing noticeably at a rapid pace, and it was only the lowest potion. Soon I realized that I was weak enough to recover from the lowest potion. One low-end health potion made my body stronger than it was before. Even if I escaped like this, the goblin would still follow me because I had his knife. I was sure he would. Now that I'm fully recovered, can I outrun him by running again? I was still not sure. I heard a loud noise from beyond the passage. A goblin was chasing me. He was already in the passage. The confrontation was inevitable. I could understand his thought process. I've been fatally wounded for some time, so he assumed that I was surely passed out by now, and if so, he was sure that he could easily get rid of me. Little did he know that I had consumed a potion, and I am now completely recovered. I even have a weapon. Two weapons. It is worth trying. He lost his knife and he exhausted himself running after me. He even fought another goblin just now. Fighting consumes more resources than you think. Surely his condition was degraded. 
I was able to beat more than ten goblins one after another because I was able to regain health by consuming them at the end of each fight. My circumstances were unique. He didn't have the predation skill. It was clear that not all goblins had this skill. I stood up with a rusty knife in one hand and an empty potion bottle in the other. The potion bottle was glass. It will be a potent weapon for lowly goblins. There was a scream. Their battle must be over. I wanted the other goblin for myself if it was possible, but it was already too late. I slowly started walking towards the entrance of the passage. On the other side, there was the sound of someone running. Of course, it was probably the goblin that was holding the knife. Discreetly, I walked at a slow pace close to the ground, feigning a critical condition. The goblin would have discovered my recovered disposition if I walked quickly. As well, I could have given away my position if I didn't stay close to the ground. I lowered my posture and held the glass bottle tightly. I continued to move forward as if dragging my body. The goblin's harsh breath came from right outside the passage, and then he immediately jumped into the opening. Key. Kayap. I threw the vial violently at the face of the confused goblin as soon as he entered. Pack. The bottle shattered on contact, and glass fragments stuck into his eyes. Kick. Kick Andy. He screamed and stretched his hands forward. Now is my chance. I struck the knife straight at him, stuck deep into his abdomen. My hand hurt as if it was being torn, but it was nothing compared to the pain he felt. Oh, ah. I shanked him again with the knife. The blade was stuck inside him, leaving only the hilt visible. Kiki. He vomited and drew back. Both of his eyes were still bloody. It still wasn't safe to approach him as he was still waving his muscular arms in the air. If I hit him directly, I was sure I would still receive considerable damage. So, instead of getting up close and hitting him, I chose a different method. There were stones everywhere. I picked some up and threw it at him. It may be wimpy, but I was desperate to win. Stop. Stop it. Kiki. My desperate attempt was more effective than I presumed as I was at a closer range. He was hit by the stones and began to rattle more and more. As I approached him, I braced myself more carefully. As long as the knife was stuck in his abdomen, he was sure to fall. That was unless he had a way to restore his health automatically. Ki -i, -i, -i. I was anxious, but no such thing happened. The more he was hit, the less power he had in his fists. The moment I hit his head, he fell on the spot, and a window stating that he was dead came to my eyes soon after. You have received 100 experience. You have received 10 bronze. Level up. You have acquired the beginner swordsmanship skill. You have acquired the beginner throwing skill. At that moment, I felt joy as if I was born again. Level up. It was a blessing to help me survive this dungeon. Moreover, the two phrases made me even happier. A skill. I have acquired two new skills. Beginner Swordsmanship LV1. The ability to wield the sword. If you handle a lot of swords, your skill will grow, and the higher the skill level, the more your swordsmanship will be corrected. Beginner Throw LV1. The ability to throw stones or to pick them up. The skill grows as you throw more, and corrections are applied to throws as the skill level increases. I can't believe it. It's a dream come true to learn a combat skill and became dramatically stronger. After all, the ebon heart and predation were special skills. I swore inside as I approached his body. I pulled the knife out, wiped my blood-stained blade over his corpse, and then called the inventory and put it in. I was the winner. I succeeded in defeating an enemy that was clearly stronger than me. I looked around and checked the safety of my surroundings, then laughed a little and mumbled. I will enjoy this food. I wondered what the difference would be. Unlike the previous goblins, this goblin was tough. It wasn't that there was no taste. It was just a little harder to eat. However, after I ate, the reward was clear. Strength has risen by one. As a result, I gained one strength and one stamina through predation. Gong Siho, Fate. Goblin LV6. Strength, 13 health, 15 magic. 5 Luck Dash, Skill Ebon Heart, Predation LV1, Escape LV1, Beginner Swordsmanship LV1, Beginner Throw LV1. I was still unsightly, 
but compared to the first time I opened my eyes, it was a significant development. I smiled. Being stronger means you are more likely to survive. Now I just had to kill three more goblins. Just a little bit more. Ha! Huh. Why didn't the glass window come up when I ate the goblin? I summoned the quest in my mind. Only sixteen were checked. I came up with the fact that this goblin was a little different from an ordinary goblin, other things were similar, but his upper body was more developed than the goblin. It looks very slightly different from an ordinary goblin. The quest content did not update. In other words, he wasn't a goblin, or rather, he wasn't just a goblin but a goblin upgrade. Maybe goblins carrying knives like this one are upgraded versions of regular goblins. They give you a lot of experience and drop a knife, but I have to run away as soon as I spot one. I didn't have a potion anymore. Moreover, even if I killed one, it wouldn't add to my quest. I have to be at least level 20 to deal with one safely, not just level 10. I woke up. I was gonna hunt and eat more goblins. But at that time, my heart was racing. Thud. Kwang. As if to warn me, the heart of the ebon was beating. My whole body was stiff. A little while later, I felt something from beyond the passage. It was stronger than the goblin upgrade I just barely defeated. Chapter 5. The First Evolution 1. The First Evolution 1. I desperately held my breath. I gently leaned back. I didn't want to misstep on a stone and make even a little bit of sound. If I was caught, I was sure that it would all be over. I was confident that even an upgraded goblin would die if it went beyond that passage. It was that hard to beat. That silence became a moment of vulnerability, and tears seemed to come out of my eyes. I held back from sobbing because I didn't want to make even a slight din. All the while, I desperately moved my body very slowly. The guy across the passage didn't seem to have noticed me at all. I couldn't afford to celebrate. I just focused on getting as far as possible from him. I persevered for thirty minutes. I was wondering if I could get another skill. Even if I had a blade, I was still lacking. I was only able to calm down after passing one more passage. I lost my mind back there. I calmed my racing heart and took a breath slowly. Even though only the weakest monsters were gathered here, I could have died at any moment, just trying to pass the quests. And I knew that it was because I was the weakest of the weak monsters. Damn it. I will be strong. I was hesitant about how far my limits were as a member of the goblin species. Nevertheless, I endured forward with fiery eyes. I repaired the average, rusty blade and started walking again towards the next passage, hoping to find a weaker goblin than me. Time passed by. I couldn't determine precisely how much time had passed, so I had to tread forward with discretion. I didn't want to feel physically exhausted like before, but now I couldn't afford to take care of myself. Unlike in my college days, I was prepared to sacrifice anything just to be alive. I had already suffered death before. It was cold and frightening. Losing my sense of permanence was a terrifying experience. I don't want to die again. I want to live. I want to live in any form and in any way. That was who I am now. I caught and ate three more goblins, but my level was still six. I just needed one more goblin to complete the quest and receive its benefits. I found a goblin. It wasn't armed and was much smaller in size compared to the other goblins. Better yet, it was in a deep sleep. Sleeping is not a sin. Unless you have a predatory skill and your stamina can infinitely reset, drowsiness approaches all creatures weak or strong. I found many sleeping goblins and I kindly killed them all. I stepped lightly and stuck the knife into its neck. It was rusty and second-rate, but it was enough to penetrate the sleeping opponent's throat. That was it. You gained ten experience. You received one bronze. Goblin Hunt 2020. After pulling out the knife, I looked around to see if it was safe like I always did. Then I ate the goblin. Goblin Predation 20-20. At that moment, my eyes filled with dizzying glass windows. Quest achieved. You gained 1,000 experience points. You received one silver. You received two lowest health potions. You received one sharp iron sword. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Beginner swordsmanship has become LV3. I didn't know I would get a thousand experience points. I wasn't expecting it. The rewards were excellent. 
In particular, the sharp iron sword made me utterly pleased. I was just holding a second-rate knife and killed a few ordinary goblins. But now I had a sharp iron sword. Moreover, since my level has risen by four, my strength and stamina have also increased by four each. Maybe, just maybe, I will now be capable of fighting the upgraded goblin. But it wasn't over yet. My heart started beating wildly. I don't know why. I wasn't sure what triggered it. But my heart was beating so hard that I thought it would bounce out. Along with that, a voice came to me. It was the same voice from the beginning of the reversal. Evolution is possible. Choose a race for evolution. 1. Goblin Fighter I was staring blankly at the glass window without thinking of checking my status. What did I just hear? Evolution. Did I just hear evolution? Is this possible? If changing to another species is achievable, then there is no limit to my growth. This type of thing didn't happen for countless generations. Why am I experiencing it now? It seemed to be possible for me to evolve. I had a feeling that such a ridiculous concept was impossible for anyone else. The loud beating of my heart proved it. Perhaps this is the power of the ebon heart. Of course, if I tried to call out its skill information, it would still be question marks. There was nothing more I could do unless I could get additional information about the ebon heart. I looked at the glass window with the title Goblin Fighter. I had a feeling. The goblins carrying a sword. It was them. I was sure. They had a slightly different body structure from the ordinary goblins and were not part of the quest. Is there any merit if I evolved? I thought about it, but it didn't know. Moreover, judging from the information that appeared on the glass window, I ruled that there was no option not to evolve. It doesn't make sense to hesitate if you have the chance to do so anyway. I reached out to the glass window. The glass rang with a clear sound. Then the change began. Agagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagagag
and as if it read my thought, a new window appeared in front of me. Quest generated. You have become a goblin fighter that is less vulnerable than a weakened goblin. You know how to grow. There is no time to settle for the goblin fighter's body. Hunt and consume a goblin fighter zero out of one hundred. One hundred. One hundred. I was so embarrassed. It was a different situation from what I was expecting. I was confident that I could kill ordinary goblins easily, so I didn't intend to risk myself by challenging the goblin fighters. But I gazed at the last phrase of the quest. Wait a minute, are you saying there's more? My heart was pounding. I stroked myself. I'm still not good. There were no dramatic changes from being a goblin to a goblin fighter. However, if I undergo many more changes, maybe I could evolve into something similar to humans. I had given up everything except being alive after becoming a goblin. I used to sleep on a soft bed, take a bath in hot water, and... Jajangmian. Jajangmian. I want to eat Jajangmian. I couldn't go outside the dungeon. I'm a monster. I will be either shot or killed by magic or a sword if I did. I don't know what's currently happening in the outside world, but no human ever partnered with goblins. A goblin can never be friends with humans. However, if the evolution continues, goblins may be able to become a race similar to humans. If that doesn't work, maybe it can be a race that can replicate human appearance. A new need has emerged. It was a lie if I had no complaints about living in a dark underground cave eating only goblins. Once I realized my new purpose, my desire swelled out of control. I gulped and swallowed. My mouth watered. I realized that I was at a crossroads between two choices. My first option was to ignore the possibility of the future and only look for weak goblins to survive. The second and more ambitious option was to fight against a goblin fighter of equal or greater strength to evolve further. This is my life. I have to be careful. Is this a cave that has risen since the Great Fusion? Do we need to go inside? So scary. Captain, what will we do when a monster appears? We don't have any powers. We are useless. Bring popcorn, userin. Haha, <laughs> that's right. If you are eating popcorn from behind, I will guard you. I have experience and strength as a mercenary. Three people had entered the dungeon. Chapter 6. The First Evolution. 2. The First Evolution. 2. I knew from some point that an exit existed. I believed that there was a hole that brought in wind from the outside. However, I didn't even think of going outside. What is even out there to prompt me to go? Even if there were a lot of people outside, I had the body of a monster. There was a high chance that they would try to kill me without listening to a thing I would say. Within the Black Palace, I was at a place where only the weakest goblins resided. I only wandered around these places which was very different from those the goblin fighters and powerful monsters would go. Simply said, I would describe this place as the dungeon yard. A dungeon yard that one could sweep so easily with a broom in a game. I always thought that people would be able to come inside, but I never imagined them to come inside this quick. Is it the end for them too? Would people even leave this place alone? I don't think so. Always at a time like this, my feelings hit it on the nail. I felt that there would soon be someone who was unmatched to them in power. No, the truth is even now I couldn't defeat them. The two left were very average. However, the one who said he had the experience and strength of that of a mercenary had something more to him. I felt at the very least he was higher than a Golbin fighter. Even if I had the strength of the Ebon Heart and ran into it like crazy, I had no faith in myself. What if people even stronger than the warrior came in? What if more people came? The experience that I gained killing goblins and bronze wasn't only given to me. Furthermore, in this new world, these things were bound to be of importance. Just as in a game, players will find the dungeon, other people could find this place and come in. What should I do? What? I knew what I had to do. I have to go inside. Deep inside. I had no way of knowing how many strong people would come through that entry. Goblin fighters could be a joke. People that would come in might be able to end goblin fighters with a fist. They might be that OP. But the monsters get stronger as you go. The deeper and the lower you travel, they get stronger slowly. As if someone had set it up this way. Also, I knew for sure that if I followed a quest I could get stronger faster. 
If I stayed here with these goblins, there was no way that I could do that. The 10 EXP they gave were not helping me much. The danger that one could not pinpoint with that of growing stronger. It was clear which path to take. Go. Inside. To the place where I've always disregarded. Where the Golbin fighters wander. It's dingy and damp. I want to go out. Even so, strong monsters don't just appear in the dungeon. Ugh. I want to go home. Of all people, why does my partner have to be an ordinary flower shop owner? Why? Team leader. My guy is a plumber. Don't worry, Miss Seal Rin. I'll take care of you. Ha ha ha. H.A. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mr. Han Song Ji. It's nothing. Ha ha ha. Dumbass. He is a dumbass, but he's strong. If he were to get caught, things would become difficult. We needed to head inside while we still had the heart to. I placed the rusty sword back into the inventory and grabbed the two highest stamina potions with delight. Next to that, I took out a very sharp sword and held it. It was very sharp, very agile. Furthermore, it was much longer than the rusty sword. It seemed to be about 50 centimeters. It may not be that long to a human, but it was more than enough for a goblin with short arms, legs, and height. I can do it. I nodded firmly. The feeling of facing a goblin and detesting death was the same. The only difference is that the knife is sharper, longer, and more charismatic than a goblin's fist. Predation doesn't erase scars, but it helps you heal quickly. Even if one were to be defeated with a knife, there's no saying that one would die immediately. This is good. I moved my feet inside. Finally far from the place where goblins were, I entered the opening made for goblin fighters. Creak. I saw it immediately. A well-developed upper body and a rusty knife in hand. It was no doubt a goblin fighter. Creak. Creak. However, I wasn't scared as I was before. I had now become a goblin fighter. Even if it was only of recent, I had the ebon heart and a sharp steel sword. It was possible. I threw a rock at the goblin fighter. It avoided and started running towards me with intense anger. <laughs> My eyes were only set on the knife it had in its hand. His fists didn't scare me too much. The knife. Now if I could just take it away. Suddenly, I had an idea. It was the same moment when the goblin fighter was closing in on me. I took the rusty sword out of inventory and threw it at him with my right hand. As a metal object came out of nowhere, the goblin fighter, taken aback, quickly used the knife in his right hand to deflect but I ran at him first and struck him down with my right arm. The goblin fighter wailed and screamed. He was in pain and let go of his knife. The blood dripping down from his arm landed on my face. Creak! You're dead meat! The goblin fighter's face immediately turned gray. The moment I saw that my heart began to pound profusely. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to go. I removed the blade that was stuck in its arm. The blade surprisingly slipped out easily. The goblin fighter's face was filled with sadness and came for me. Cree! With its arm lazily hanging, the goblin fighter clenched his left fist trying to ward me off. His state was amusing. Can't place fear on me any longer. I extended the knife forward, just like the fencers I saw on TV. The goblin fighter stopped soon after it came for me. The knife was inside his chest and peeked outside its back. Grew up. The goblin fighter stopped moving completely. As its hazy eyes stopped moving, I removed my blade quietly. Blood started spouting and the goblin fighter was no more. You've earned 100 EXP. You've earned 10 bronze. Wait, I did it. I actually won by facing the goblin fighter myself. This pure feeling of ecstasy. I could shout. Of course, from my time in the dungeon, I knew that making big noises was the dumbest thing I could do. So, I suppressed my feelings of joy and excitement. I looked at my surroundings as if I've always had done so. After checking that there was no one, I placed the goblin fighter's rusty knife in my inventory. Even if one doesn't collect the item, it comes into inventory after a certain amount of time passes. I knew this, there was no reason to try. All of my money was in one place as well as the two potions. So, I thought that the knife would be in one place. However, in between the money, potions, and knife, I saw the shape of another item. 
I just noticed that the inventory was bigger than before. It was definitely 33, but was now 34. It must have changed as I defeated the goblin fighter. You. This tunnel is creepy. Feels like there's something moving inside. I'm sure I heard something earlier that sounded like horrible screeching sounds. No way. Let's just hope there's nothing inside. I'll eliminate anything that comes our way. Right at that moment, I heard voices of idiots that were coming closer. Even though I was human once, they were enemies at this point that could kill me. I hoped that the goblins would gang up on them and kill them. Just thinking that made me feel as if my morality shriveled away from me. Doesn't matter. The important thing is that I would live. That I would grow stronger. Only these things were of the utmost importance. Thank you for the food. I've eaten countless goblins. Even though this one was similar to my size, I felt nothing eating him. Felt normal. Before it took me ten minutes to finish eating a goblin, but now I could eat a slightly bigger goblin fighter in three minutes. It must be around that time, even without a timer. Goblin fighter predation one out of one hundred. Stamina increase by one. Tears welled up in utter happiness as I looked at the status window. I couldn't put into words the pride I felt for achieving this. Yes, goblins have low IQ and even goblin fighters are low as well. They do, however, possess knowledge much greater than goblins. I felt like I could raise my knowledge in times to come. I could become more powerful quickly. As I was dwelling in my happy thoughts, noisy voices coming shattered my dreams into a million pieces. Mon monster. It's a goblin. You see Orin, it's your time. Bring popcorn. Team leader, stop making jokes. It's really not funny right now. You two should step aside. These humans didn't realize it. But their uncontrolled voices were dispersing uncontrollably. Up until now, the goblins felt the power of the mercenaries and avoided contact, but that seemed to change by circumstance. I felt a large-scale movement of goblins. When alone, one tends to go for it. It is a valid choice. To stop humans from escaping, only a couple of goblins are sent. Within that time, they were building a plan to siege. In the dungeon, goblins fight amongst one another. But when there is a foreign enemy, they are scary efficient at coming together. How do I know so much? The time I spent predating these goblins, one wouldn't be able to measure. Furthermore, I was equal to an enemy to these goblins as they were. No need to involve ourselves with these idiots. Let's just go deeper. I went in without hesitation, deeper into the path. However, in the second tunnel I suddenly felt chills running up my body. Ugh! What was this situation? Near the tunnel there it was. A goblin. Creek. Only. Its head was one bigger than mine and had a rare, huge body. Oh, and it was wearing a leather jacket, even as low as it was. Lastly, its thick bastard sword made mine look elementary. If I were to exaggerate, the sword would be comparable to my height. Though that wasn't what scared me. It was its aura. It was on a higher level than a goblin fighter. On a way different level than me. This was my way to death. No way I could beat someone of this caliber. My heart started to beat. The ebon heart kicked in, increasing my blood flow. The thought of surviving surpassed way beyond me. Automatically, I was gauging how I needed to move in this situation to survive. Would one consider this growth? As I was reaching the pinnacle of contemplating, I heard, creak. It moved its neck and faced me. And as if it was nothing, he wielded his bastard sword. Chapter 7 Goblin Warrior 1. Goblin Warrior 1. It seemed like the thunder was jumping in front of my eyes. Kook! Scarlet red blood embroidered the air. As soon as I had the thought of fireworks, immense pain came over me. It felt as if my stomach and chest were suddenly opened. It hurt badly. It was painful. A pain I could convince myself similar to that of death. Like a paper doll, I fell easily. Having done me, it laughed and left the tunnel looking pleased. Its footsteps sounded like someone who had a purpose. That's when I realized. There was a reason as to why it was even here, in the middle of the goblin fighter's domain. It sensed the humans that were outside and came to predate on them. Then, it happened to run into my unlucky ass. It was just coincidence that it put me on the brink of death. I lied there for a bit longer. 
I was there thinking whether or not it would come back for me or if another high-ranking monster would pop out to kill me. However, neither of those scenarios happened. I stoop up. I was in so much pain, but at the least I could move. Truthfully, the wound wasn't that deep. Phew. Phew. Still it hurts. Damn. I was aware that it was going to attack me. As soon as he started attacking, I pulled my body back. I could tell he was planning on ripping out my innards, and his knife easily passed through my stomach. In all cases, this was a gamble. It could have easily slashed me more, or even realized his blade only slightly entered my body. However, my acting close to death seemed to have been sufficiently convincing. In addition, the ebon heart. My blood flowed quickly and in high amounts, despite the fact that I was only slightly wounded. It did take a lot from my health but proved very useful in convincing it that I was dead. Anyways, I was alive. I really thought I was going to die. I was feeling intense emotions of fear and despair when we both laid eyes on each other. To add another emotion, I would say rage. Despite the amount of time I've been here, just how much more of this fear of death did I have to face? The feeling is practically a part of me. However, this dungeon is not a place where I could escape danger. It is true that there is a certain caliber of monsters here, but a higher rank could be here as I just now experienced. I have to become greater, faster. The blood stopped. I had a feeling that the ebon heart had something to do with my recovery rate. I tried my hardest to move while feeling the gross pain that passed through my stomach and chest. At this moment, there was a light coupled with a dark figure of a goblin fighter in the middle of the entrance I had walked in. This situation was all too familiar. The situation where monsters appear out of thin air. This was nothing to be shocked of, as the dungeons were the goblin fighter's domain. Plain and simple. To add, monsters that are just born tend to be quite dumb. Even if I were to open my eyes and be in the body of a monster, I would be just as defenseless. Anyways, because of this fact, they were excellent prey. That being my prey. Guck! Gluark! The goblin fighter wailed. He happened to be close to me and my steel sword punctured his chest with no resistance. I wasn't so sure of the upper level monsters, but I knew that goblin fighters only possessed rusty swords. There was no way it could block a steel sword. See you later. I forcefully extracted my sword from its chest and kicked this goblin fighter down. It had definitely lost its life from the blow. You've earned 100 EXP. You've earned 10 bronze. Level up. At that moment, the scar once there from my stomach to chest disappeared without a trace. This was a miracle. With my health fully recharged, I felt like I could face anyone that would come my way. The status window from my peripheral fully supported and exaggerated my elated emotions. Kong Siha, Fate. Goblin Fighter LV-11. Stamina, 30 Health, 31 Magic, 5 Fate. Skill, Ebon Heart, Predation LV-1. Escape LV-1. Swordsmanship LV-4. Knife Throw LV-2. My stamina and health both went up two levels. I opened my eyes intensely and focused. There was a reason why upper levels became so powerful. I felt this fact down to my bones. Because our starting points are different, the rate at which they and I grew from the same level up was drastically different. If so, who's higher than the goblin fighters? And who's even stronger than that? It wasn't even a question that the difference would get drastically higher as the list went on. I thought of the upper levels that had passed me up. It wielded its sword like that of a maniac following a fly. There was a high chance that it abandoned me without checking because I posed no actual threat to its life. Probably was the truth. The truth was I had a hard time even following his sheer strength and quickness with my mere eyes. Even with my all, I could barely pierce through his leather jacket with my sword. However, that is just now. It might be possible in a bit. I will make this a reality no matter what it takes. Goblin warrior? This is a goblin warrior. What should we do? Damn. The entry is blocked. This is impressive for a goblin. Hup. I will destroy everything for you guys. I'll protect you, Miss Seo Rin. Kriya Aya. At that moment, the sound became amplified. This meant it finally met up with the mercenary group. It thought that they were clearly going to be an upper-level species, that they were goblin warriors. But wait. 
Does that mean if the goblin warrior were to defeat the mercenaries, he would return back here? The thought captivated me. It usually wanders deeper than here, though. It is known that the format of the dungeon is complicated. That includes the many entrances connecting the goblin domain, goblin fighter domain, and the goblin warrior domain. Even so, it probably would enter back through its usual entrance, right? I'll really be dead meat if I continue to stay here until he comes back. Without a doubt, I'll be finished. My heart was uneasy and I began to panic. Now was the time to move. I was unsure how long the battle would last. I have to increase my distance from them as quickly as possible. I had no time to be eating a goblin fighter. There was no reason to either, as my state was perfect from just leveling up. I threw its body into inventory just because it entered with such ease. Singing to myself in delight, I quickly entered into the tunnel. Now was not the time to be secretive. I had to move as quickly as possible. I grabbed onto the two swords in my hands, positioning myself in a way that could charge straight ahead given the circumstance. You never knew when a goblin warrior was going to come at you. Quietly inching about to sneak attack was safe but took a painstakingly long time. Doing that right now would be fatal. Ah, it's here. Surely as it was the goblin fighter's domain, there stood a goblin fighter in one of the tunnels. Creak! As soon as he saw me, he wailed loudly and started to charge towards me. It was just as I expected. To fight against the enemy of pain. When there were no humans present, goblins could care less if you were one of them. It would have been nice if they were chill with their own species, but there was not a single exception. I too faced him and charged forward. Compared to a goblin warrior, this one was awfully weak and was no more agile than me. Looking at the goblin fighter's rusty knife, the previous feelings of fear and rage were flowing through me once more. Now, I was able to control the ebon heart a little at my will. There's no option but to win against a weak opponent. The ebon heart was helping me do just that. Hap! One blow was enough. Its rusty knife was only 30 centimeters, but my steel sword was 50 centimeters. No doubt that without a difference in swordsmanship and stance from one another, the sword with a longer reach was to win. The rusty knife missed my chest and entered my left arm. It wasn't too deep. Conversely, the sharp steel sword in my hand had accurately punctured its heart, which exploded. Though level 4 swordsmanship is still level 4, I had the skill to pierce the opponent's most vulnerable spots. My abilities had to have grown. You've earned 100 EXP. You've earned 10 bronze. You've earned a flimsy piece of cloth. This is good. I quickly threw its rusty knife and lifeless body into inventory. Then I quickly went deeper into the tunnel. Creak! Now this one had more experience than that of a goblin fighter. It prepared its body to receive my attack, moving slight from left to right. It definitely had some experience. If I messed up here, it could be a loss for me. After all the things that had happened, I just threw my sharp sword at him out of nowhere. Creak! It didn't expect me a savage animal, to let go of the one weapon in my hand. It was dallying when its body received my sharp sword. My strength was weak wielding the sword, so it didn't necessarily penetrate through his body. It was, however, sufficient enough to cause him suffering. I forced myself onto this thing. I had rusty knives in both of my hands. Creak! Creak! I was able to snatch its knife easily, as it lost its balance and strength at the same time. With my other hand, I began to stab his face. You've earned 170 EXP. Only. You've earned 10 bronze. You've leveled up knife throw skill to 3. My breath was out of control. I couldn't believe that, in this short amount of time, I was able to turn my life around. I made the impossible possible. I was completely unaware of these decision-making skills, yet I had used them to kill. Few. Few. It seems like there's always a place for skills. Knife-throwing skills. For opponents unaware of inventory, this skill was perfect to make them careless. It seemed like it had some experience, but was surprised at my knife-throwing. Instead of me, it ultimately experienced defeat. Furthermore, this one was of a higher level than most goblin fighters. This goblin had a significantly higher experience, and its bloody bruise on its left arm from its previous fighting seemed to prove my point. 
I felt my heart pumping blood throughout my entire body. While my tired body experienced a slight rest, I began to check for any other monsters that would come for me. It was then I realized something. The noisy battle sounds I heard coming had stopped. Chapter 8 Goblin Warrior 2 Goblin Warrior 2 Who won? My mind was racing. However, nothing would be altered just by my mind racing. Thus, I decided to first take a bite out of the goblin fighter's arm. My health started to slowly rise and the pain from my wound subsided. This is good. I started to move again. This time I headed towards another tunnel. I was in an unusually quiet tunnel. At this place a goblin appeared. Now, goblins were nothing to me. I didn't even need my sharp steel sword. A rusty knife was plenty. I struck it dead. You've earned 9 EXP. You've earned 1 bronze. The monster's domain is definitely not equally divided. If I had known this, I would have never fought with the goblin fighter in the first place. However, what was more concerning than that was the EXP. The EXP from fighting goblins had dropped down to 9. It was probably due to the disparity between levels. Things like this happen frequently in games. Catch as many of the weaklings as one likes, but one doesn't level up. One cannot get stronger. It became painstakingly obvious. Phew! I think I can head back to the entrance from here. After all I had done to avoid the goblin warrior, there was no way that it would come through this path. At least I hoped. I threw myself to that tunnel. Just how much did I walk? All of a sudden, several goblins came running into the tunnel. Instantly I knew that I was closer to the dungeon's entrance. Creek. Curic. Firstly, I wielded my knife and killed them one by one. I was not familiar with a gang versus one person, but these goblins possessed no knowledge or skill. They just collectively came running towards me. I attacked those closest to me first, kicking and slashing them. Their fists were of no harm to me. There was no more space in inventory for all these goblins, so I haphazardly got rid of most by eating them. Now, what was I to do? Should I stay in this area a bit longer? Or would it be best to check on the situation? I contemplated for a second but eventually moved forward. There was nothing beyond that could possibly scare me anymore. This could be from my monster's body's instincts or an attribute from the ebon heart. I wasn't too sure. However, I knew that it was definitely accurate in determining whether a situation was safe or dangerous. I felt it since the moment I was born as a goblin. Given that I wasn't in immediate danger, I also wanted to scope the situation of the battle. Knowing this would help me plan out my future actions moving forward. I walked slowly. The right path seemed to open up as my footsteps matched it perfectly. There I saw several goblin fighters on the floor, slain. There were way more goblins than goblin fighters. The floor was drenched in scarlet blood. It was a literal bloodbath. Moving quickly, I avoided stepping in the blood, worried that it might make noise. There were humans up ahead. Unlike me, these people still had their partners and were together with their original human bodies. However, I did not envy them. Humans were all dead right now. Any corpse that looked female had been stripped to the bone. Even witnessing this, I felt absolutely nothing. I've watched countless of goblins die and the majority of those I also killed. But are the deaths of humans and goblins comparable? Why was it that I felt nothing watching these humans die? It was because I had become a monster. If I was human, at the very least I would feel something. Realizing this fact, I suddenly felt so empty. However, this was not the time to be wallowing in my feelings. I realized the winner had become a goblin warrior and for some reason, it only devoured the female corpses. I thought about it. Unless you possess the skill of predation, it's not like you're going to build strength by eating humans. You just eat till you're full then leave. Hmm, I guess the only reason why it eats females instead of the two males is probably due to the fact that the flesh is softer. Turns out I was wrong. It was actually near humans. I failed to notice its presence as it was still a stone. Uck! Instinctually I almost screamed, but I immediately shut myself up. This guy wasn't trying to hide from me, even though my senses were telling me that I was in no harm. What is going on? Cree! Creek! It seemed to me that it was observing me. I couldn't tell if it was wailing or laughing, 
but it started to head towards me. The jacket was ripped and stabbed through violently. The knife and sword were shoved into the stomach and chest. This bastard sword was sprawled on the floor. I had to be dreaming. One side didn't have an advantage over the other. This was a lose-lose situation. Creak. Creak. As I was relishing in the thought, the goblin warrior raised its hand towards me. Shockingly, something popped out of that hand. A very faint, string-like, white light. This thing touched me. I instantly felt a sharp pang throughout my entire body. Lightning. This had to be lightning. The goblin warrior was shooting out lightning. The likes of a goblin warrior. It took its hand back after a series of attacks. One side of its lips was raised, smirking at me. The goblin warrior was unable to even recognize his wounds. Was it really looking down on me right now? Kuuk. I was unable to move right now, afraid and in pain. I wanted to turn back and make a run for it. I was almost certain that if it was another goblin fighter, it would have done so. However, I ran with full force towards it. Caught off guard, the goblin warrior raised its hand once again, and lightning popped out. I was able to endure it as it was weaker than the attacks previously. I forced my tender and aching body to move, reaching for the goblin fighter's arm from inventory. I started gnawing at it and felt a small surge of energy coming back. Suddenly, the goblin warrior was near me. Its eyes were fluttering open and shut. This was expected. Its lightning ability was a front. Even if it still had the strength to use magic to attack, it would have used it all whilst fighting the mercenaries. Despite the state of its body, was it really saving mana right now? Now, this is what you'd call a dumbass. Of course, its weakened lightning ability was more than enough to drive out goblins. But man, goblins really aren't that bright. I'm not like them. I took out my sharp steel sword. The goblin warrior's face had turned completely white and was unable to move. I stole a look at its wound, which could not be stabbed more violently. Seeing me, it started to slowly inch its body backward. I was wary of it and distanced myself, factoring in the chance of it attacking me with its last strength but it could barely move. Just as I thought, there was a limit to its strength. With all my strength, every last ounce of it, I aimed my sword straight for his stomach and shoved it in. Huck! He shrieked in utter pain. Its intimidating arm was of no comparison to my scrawny one, which it swung about to knock me down. I ducked low to avoid it and shoved my sword in even deeper. Instead of knocking me down, its arm was flailing about in the air and it fell to the floor dead. My revenge was successful. You've earned 700 EXP. You've earned 95 bronze. Level up. You've attained swordsmanship level 5. I thought that the amount of EXP I gained from only hitting the goblin warrior with a finishing hit was weird. It seemed to me that this world was all about gaining much from little effort. Maybe it was because the mercenary who was supposed to get the EXP had died instead. To sum things up, it seemed like I earned this crazy amount of EXP by slaying the goblin fighter solely by my own self. It hadn't been too long since my last level up, but here I experienced it again. My body that was once a mess from the lightning magic was now completely healed and normal. I felt the utter happiness that was coming from the depths of my soul. But I didn't shout. It would be a waste to call attention to myself, after all I did to run away from the goblins. Fate was on my side. It was true. My luck was unbelievable. It was as though someone somewhere had felt sorry that he or she had turned me into a goblin and completely set this whole thing up. I now didn't have to worry and tremble in fear about the goblin warrior coming back to kill me. It only took me this one experience to level up, and I obtained a multitude of powerful prey. Multitude? I stopped thinking up until this point and looked down at the goblin warrior's lifeless body. It was then I saw a female corpse that had been eaten down to her bones and the uneaten corpse of a male mercenary. Eating? Humans? My heart then split into two. When I was human, there would be no contemplating. Thus, it was more shocking for me. I was astounded at the fact that I didn't feel any disgust at the thought of eating humans. It was then I resisted. For the first time, I resisted my belief that staying alive and getting stronger was not mutually exclusive. I knew that I had to be prepared to kill a human to stay alive. But eating a human was a different story. 
humans will kill each other to stay alive, but they absolutely don't eat each other. So that's what it is. I realized something. I still regarded myself as a human. Human food wasn't the only thing I was craving. Stuck in a tiny dungeon amongst the bodies of goblins, I had been longing for the human life that I once had. A foolish idea. Though one thing was certain. The moment I decide to eat a human, I could no longer identify with humankind. Even if there was a chance, I turned back. I couldn't return back to society. There was no way I could nonchalantly meet eye to eye with a human. Not my mother, father, siblings, nor friends. Standing at the crossroads, my following actions were that of a coward. I placed the two male corpses into inventory. A bad decision. There was no humanity left in me to abandon. And furthermore, I couldn't help but acknowledge the absolute needs of my monster body. That is why I decided to delay making a choice. I know I'm talking about myself, but man, I was a coward. Someday, and probably not far in the future, the time will come where I have to make a choice. I was able to justify my actions by convincing myself that when I did make a decision in the future, it would be firmly and without wavering. Along with the bastard sword on the floor, I took out the knife and sword shanked into the goblin warrior's body and placed them into inventory. Afterward, I individually moved the goblin warrior and fighter's corpses to a safe location, far away from the entrance and goblins. I gave up on the goblin corpses, as it would take way too much time to move them. Finishing moving the corpses, I firmly made up my mind on the spot. What a sight! I was looking at this corpse. It was so big that I questioned if I could finish it all. However, I had to finish it all in one sitting. There were no more spots left in inventory, and I could not allow myself to pass up on eating a monster that would make me stronger. After making my mind up, I tore off the goblin warrior's arm. This muscular arm was way different from that of a goblin and a goblin fighter. Not an ounce in my body wanted this food, but I threw away all thoughts interfering with my determination to get stronger. Thank you for this food. I finished it whole after removing his scrappy leather jacket or otherwise what had become trash. My predation skill helped me quickly eat him. It didn't taste too bad. At this point, I was beyond full but suppressed all emotions and turned my head towards the goblin fighter's corpse. Even before I ate it, I felt my body change. Only, my slender arm, which had become more muscular since becoming a goblin fighter, became even bigger. Even more, my insides felt like it had grown. This wasn't all of it. It was different from a level up. I felt something like I had something new that was filling my insides up. I became stronger. But how? I soon found out when I looked at the status window. Stamina increased by two. Health increased by three. Magic increased by one. You've earned a new skill, lightning magic. Swordsmanship increased to level six. Chapter nine. The second evolution, one. The second evolution, one. Not believing what I had seen, I rubbed my unsuspecting eyes and looked at the notification window again to confirm that I wasn't hallucinating. I had learned magic. I had gotten the goblin warrior's lightning ability. After eating a goblin warrior, I now had the power to attack using only my mind. As well, I was previously just a beginner swordsman at level 5, but now I had risen to level 6. It now became perfectly clear to me that the predation skill is not about merely absorbing the strength of the enemy that I eat, but also incorporating their skill. I regretted my words when I said that predation was just a simple skill. It wasn't. It was the best skill of all. I also learned that despite eating a lot of goblins, I didn't get any new skills because the goblins didn't have any, and consequently, my existing skills didn't increase. In simple terms, goblins, without any useful skills, were more ineffective and barely gave any benefits other than first aid. But the goblin warrior was completely different because after eating just one, I learned lightning magic, improved my sword fighting ability, and my level had increased. Despite being weaker, the goblin fighter as well still held swords, and once eaten, I can absorb their sword fighting skills and still raise mine. I can be stronger. At that moment, I realized that I had more reasons to stay in this dungeon. The more monsters I eat, the more I will grow. Just the thought of it made me feel more motivated. I remembered the mercenary in the inventory, who must have had higher sword fighting skills than the goblin warrior, but I shook my head to drive the thoughts away. 
Not now. In front of me was a mountain of goblin fighter bodies, and I hurriedly ate all of them excited at the thought of how much strength I will gain. Strength has risen by one. Beginner swordsmanship has become LV7. Predation became LV2. I ate a total of nine goblin fighter bodies, including the bodies dragged to the safe area and those in my inventory. I also spared one body in case of an emergency. I eventually got up after my stomach felt like it was going to explode from overconsumption. I wielded my sword, and several rusty knives were thrown all over. I thought to myself that a skill that consumes stamina rather than magic would be better right now. But then again of what use would it be to me? Wielding my sword and throwing rusty knives around increased my skill level, so it wasn't so bad. It wasn't much compared to when I ate the goblin fighters, but it was still something because my sword level increased to level 7. I was at level 6 just a while ago. It was my reward for suffering and enduring death. Moreover, my predation level increased. I asked myself, do other goblin fighters also have predation? No way. The basic principle of increasing skills was to use them as often as possible because the more you use it, the more the level increases and therefore, the stronger you become. I assumed that my predation level increased either from eating stronger opponents like the Goblin Warrior or because the predation count had reached a certain number. I had not yet attempted my lightning magic. There was no harm in completing the predation first. My mana was full anyway, and predation was one of my most useful skills. I expected that something would change as the level went up, and I immediately read the Predator skill information to know what to expect. Predation LV2 Any creature can eat anything. The act of eating restores health and mana. Some toxicity is negligible. The efficiency of absorbing skills increased slightly. My eyes opened. Something had changed. First, it was now possible to recover mana through predation. I previously thought it was essential to put the body in the inventory and use it to escape, but now that I have acquired lightning magic, this new mana recovery feature synergized well with it. Second, slight toxicity has been changed to some degree of toxicity. It's a bit vague, but I guess that meant that I could evade more strain now. Third, the efficiency of absorbing the skill of what I ate has increased slightly. In the future, this efficiency would increase as the skill level of predation increases, and this made me very excited. As I was thinking about all these things, an idea crossed my mind. I recalled that the more I used a specific skill, the more the skills level increases. Like with my swordsmanship and knife-throwing skills, the more I use my lightning magic, the more it would increase. So I can use magic when my mana is full, eat the corpse to regain mana, and improve my magic by using it. Anyway, my mana was full at that time, and without hesitating, I summoned the information of the lighting magic. Beginner Lightning Magic LV1 The level of mastering a weak lightning strike from the hand. If you deal with a lot of lightning magic, your skill will develop. The higher the skill level, the stronger the lightning will become. As expected, the skill description confirmed my suspicion. The moment I had acquired the lightning power, I immediately knew how to use it. I imagined my left hand reaching out into the air, like pumping out water from a gushing spring. I summoned the lightning from the depths of my body to my arm. It transformed its shape to be lighter, sharper, and faster. And I shot it through my palms into the air. My lightning lit up the air for a moment. I looked at it, and with my eyes wide open with amazement, it was different from sword fighting and knife throwing. Something that ordinary human beings could not do was now possible through my hands. An exhilarating sensation engulfed me. The lightning was strong enough to hit an enemy one meter away. This test made me realize that I had wasted half of my mana, and I immediately regretted it. The goblin warrior was different. He was fast and powerful, and it dawned on me that soon, I will be able to do it too. That one day, I will be more powerful than the Goblin Warrior. Then I looked at the last notification window. Predation of Hunted Goblin Fighter 4 out of 100. Since I got the quest, I had eaten 8 Goblin Fighters and killed only 4. Despite this achievement, it was disappointing to know that I still had to kill 96 more Goblin Fighters. Instead of thinking about the disappointments, I decided to think about my newly acquired skills. The thought of it gave me some composure. 
The newly acquired beginner lighting was an absolute plus in my fighting capacity as it would tackle an enemy from one meter away. I knew too well of how much this magic would shock the enemy. I don't know how much time had passed. The dungeon was dark, so it was impossible to know the exact time. I didn't sleep. I desperately kept my stamina at a maximum in order not to fall asleep. I was so tired, and it was getting harder and harder to stay awake. I was afraid to run into an enemy that was stronger than me. I will never forget my encounter with the Goblin Warrior. I made sure to be attentive of what was going on around me to avoid making the same mistake again. Then I killed and ate a goblin fighter. Kill and eat. Kill and eat. Kill and eat. That was my basic principle now. I used my lightning magic, sword fighting, and knife throwing skills until I had low stamina and mana, and then replenished myself through predation. It was so excruciating. I thought I would collapse. So I stopped thinking about myself and my situation. I only thought about finding enemies, ensuring my safety, killing enemies, and eating them. Then, at some point, a new skill emerged. You acquired an introductory skill over the beginner status. You have acquired the beginner detection skill. You got a beginner surprise skill. Basic state abnormal resistance LV1. You will be able to resist slightly on all conditions. The higher the skill level, the higher the probability of success in resistance. Beginner Detection LV1. Ground yourself, identify brain activity, and traps within a radius of 5M. The higher the skill level, the higher the range and precision. Beginner Blitz LV1. Hidden attack on the enemy. Stealth correction when attacking. The higher the skill level, the stronger the effect. I was used to making detection and surprise attacks, so I was thrilled to get it. However, I was yet to get accustomed to resistance. But soon, I realized the mistake I'd been making so far. I was constantly sleeping. It became clear that a day or two wouldn't pass. I realized that during that long period of fighting with lack of sleep, I had regained my stamina with the power of predation and working while leveling up. I knew then that I had to resist sleep. Whether I became cursed, paralyzed, or poisoned, I knew I needed to resist it. I was stunned by this revelation. The fact that I was driving myself to resist sleep. Acquisition of new skills made me stronger and this was my driving factor. Getting stronger was my prize for lack of sleep. After that, as time passed, I felt a change in the environment. Three goblin fighters had ganged up against one other goblin fighter. I was using the detection skill to grasp the situation before entering the passage. The beginner detection skill grew the fastest among my skills and before long it was at level 6. It was now possible to detect up to a radius of 10M around me. Only, it won't be long till I complete the quest, I said to myself. I was conflicted. Honestly, I was confident about fighting three goblin fighters. Surprisingly, combining the powers of knife throwing and sword fighting, which were significantly higher than my lightning magic, was enough to win. Most of all, while completing the quest, my level and status were growing faster than a typical goblin fighter. If I moved to different passage, instead of fighting three goblin fighters at the same time, I could safely face one goblin fighter. It would be foolish to choose a more dangerous path when there were safer choices available. I nodded at my thoughts and moved to another passage. But the same was true for the three goblin fighters on the other aisle. Chapter 10 The Second Evolution 2 I was confused. Why? Why was this happening? Is it because I went around killing goblin fighters? I asked myself. All the goblins in the past killed each other without hesitation. Even if they were of the same species, all they cared for was for their opposition to be exterminated. Were the goblin fighters doing this out of their own will, or was it because of the dungeon? No, I needed to calm down first. The dysfunction wasn't helping, and for a moment, I almost fell into a panic. But soon after, rational thinking intervened, and I took a deep breath to dissect the situation appropriately. So far, I killed approximately 90 goblin fighters one by one, and each passage had only one goblin fighter. But now there came a situation where there were three goblin fighters in two passages. That couldn't be a natural phenomenon because it was against the goblin's instincts. Also, one of the dungeon's rules made it so that it could not spawn more than one goblin at a time. 
other passages will not be too different. I didn't know why this was happening, and I wouldn't know the answer because I was alone. I had to think about what to do. But that too, I didn't know. There were usually two paths that I could choose from, but when faced with only one path with no other options, I was forced to advance forward. There was no turning back, so I went into the aisle. The three goblin fighters were clustered in the middle of the aisle. I walked towards them as carefully as I could. Their backs were towards me. I looked around and realized that unless there was a hiding place in the passage, the goblin fighters could easily spot me. All they would have to do was throw a knife at my chest then simply finish me off with a sword. But the three guys didn't look back at me. It seems like they were scouting for something because they just walked side by side. They were fools. I rushed towards them, then struck a sharp iron sword in the barely visible neck of Goblin Fighter A. That blow was enough. A fountain of blood rose from the goblin's throat, and he shook his head to die. You received 100 experience. You acquired 10 bronze. Predation of Hunted Goblin Fighter 98 out of 100. Beginner Surprise Attack has become LV3. The quest automatically updated after the hunt. But that didn't matter at that moment. I removed all those thoughts from my head and focused on the battle. That was the first step to survival. I then attacked the other two goblin fighters after pulling the iron sword from the dead goblin fighter's neck. Goblin Fighter C immediately rushed towards me after evading it. He wasn't holding a sword, so I decided to use my lightning magic. After repeated use, it reached level 3, and the lightning became more prominent. It struck Goblin Fighter C, causing him to fall into a daze for a brief moment. I swung the sword without missing an inch. Blood rose from his chest. Kick! Goblin Fighter B then pulled away from his colleague. I rushed to Goblin Fighter C and struck his heart with my sword. Goblin Fighter C, who had a sharp iron sword deep in his chest, fell and collided with Goblin Fighter B. You received 100 experience. You acquired 10 bronze. After collecting 10 silvers, it is possible to enter the exclusive shop. Predation of Hunted Goblin Fighter 99-100. I took out a long sword from the inventory the longer and heavier sword of the two swords wielded by the mercenaries. The goblin warrior used a bastard sword that was too heavy and long. The blade was 70 centimeters long, and I couldn't handle it yet, but after leveling up, I could somewhat manage. Goblin warrior be paused for a moment. I smiled as I faced his flustered expression. I then swung the long sword. You received 100 experience. You acquired 10 bronze. Predation of Hunted Goblin Fighter 100 out of 100. Quest complete. The moment I completed the quest, countless windows filled my eyes. You received 30,000 experience. Your level has risen by a lot. You acquired 10 silver. You have obtained 3 lowest mana potion. You acquired 1 bronze shield. Beginner swordsmanship becomes LV10 and changes to lower level swordsmanship. The power and speed of your swordsmanship have increased. I stared blankly at the glass window, forgetting my surroundings for a moment. 30,000 experience. That was equivalent to killing 300 goblin fighters. I was mesmerized. Couldn't believe it. I also got 10 silvers and can now enter the exclusive store. But I decided to think about that later. The lowest mana potion wasn't a desirable reward for me knowing that I had nine bodies stored up for predation. However, drinking a potion in a bottle might be more useful in an emergency compared to eating a corpse. Earning a bronze shield was delightful. So far, I had been wielding a sword without wearing any good armor. Having a shield meant that hunting would be a little safer. The downside was that it was too big for a goblin fighter. Predating 100 goblin fighters also helped me accumulate the experience of sneaking up to an enemy and the beginner swordsmanship finally reached level 10. I didn't imagine it would end, but I didn't expect that lower would come after beginner. It felt like I had climbed a mountain. But in reality, it was more of a dune in a local playground. Anyway, I became stronger again. My chances of dying had been reduced again, and I was happy with that fact alone. An opportunity came. It was also what I expected and hoped for the most. Evolution is possible. It was possible to have a second evolution. Choose a race to evolve. 1. 
Goblin Warrior. 2. Goblin Knight. 3. Hobgoblin. My heart was full. Goblin Warrior. I could never forget that name. I was now as strong as the insurmountable wall, who almost killed me. Of course, as soon as I evolved, it would be difficult for even it to kill me. It was just a guess, but I assumed that it was a special goblin warrior because it used lightning magic, and not all goblin warriors could use magic. What was surprising was that there were two other choices besides goblin warrior. The goblin knight, who seemed to be stronger than the goblin warrior. Above all, the fact that I had never met one made it look even more unique. It meant that I had to go outside the goblin warrior zone to run into one. Both cases support my idea that the goblin knight is stronger than the goblin warrior. Perhaps it is a rare species that doesn't usually move around. But it was the third item that made me more confused. The hobgoblin. It was a superb species of white-faced goblins that appeared as a smart and strong warrior in many novels and games. Until now, the knowledge I gained from playing games have been generally correct, so I was right about many things. Conversely, there was always a chance that the hobgoblin has little to do with combat power. I had to bet on my life now and make a choice. This wasn't a game. I couldn't choose. Damn. Can anyone explain to me what these are? Then, there was this huge glass window in front of my eyes. Goblin Warrior Lowest Monster a variant of the goblin that is particularly strong. Combat the enemy with a huge sword. Very rarely, there are goblin warriors with magical abilities. Goblin knight lowest monster. Goblin fighters rarely evolve into a goblin knight. The goblin fighter must have a high proficiency in swordsmanship and self-defense. It handles swords and shields and has high intelligence, so it hurts a bigger monster than a goblin. Hobgoblin lesser monster the top species of goblins. It is a little shorter than a human and has a well-developed body. It has higher physical abilities and intelligence than goblins and sometimes leads a group of goblins to attack humans. It is not uncommon to possess magical skills. Unbelievable. Then, was I missing information that I should be having? For example, am I provided with the weapon information for the long sword or the sharp iron sword? Would it be possible to know these things just by thinking about them? Sharp Iron Sword, 1476. Attack 15. Hardened Steel Sword, 147 253. Attack 57. As soon as I thought about it, information appeared in front of me. I saw the numbers representing the attack power, but it was clear that the steel sword was stronger than the sharp iron sword. But what are the numbers inside the parentheses? After thinking about it for a moment, I wondered if it meant durability. When I compared it later, it was clear that the figure in the parentheses had decreased to 1276. Whether it's a weapon, armor, or potion, the description can be checked. I erased all the other alerts, and I read the information about my evolution. The Goblin Warrior was precisely what I thought it was. A monster with strong physical strength and magic abilities that appear only in extremely rare cases. The one I met prior was special. The information I had gotten about the Goblin Knight showed me that I wasn't the only one that can evolve. Evolution was not possible for every goblin, but it was possible for a few individuals like me to evolve multiple times. It was time to make a choice. Of course, there was no opportunity for concern. I chose the Hobgoblin only because the Goblin Warrior and Knight were the lowest, and that it is a lesser monster. More so, the Hobgoblin was a highly aggressive monster. It was clear that there would be a similar evolutionary form of the Hobgoblin Fighter, Hobgoblin Warrior, and Hobgoblin Knight. I can be stronger. The Ebon Heart was beating violently. I looked around. After confirming that there was nothing nearby, I chose Hobgoblin without hesitation. Then I closed my eyes. The pain hit me like a storm. It would be a lie to think it would get better the second time around. But this time, the pain, as if to ridicule my earlier thoughts, was far worse than before. My whole body felt like it was being ground into dust. I yielded, and countless rebars formed in my arms, legs, abdomen, and head. I couldn't move while the excruciating pain cascaded through my body. Finally, the pain slowly began to subside. I woke up. The tears in my eyes flowed freely down my cheeks. Going through that was very precarious, as I felt like I would die. Why do I have to go through this kind of pain? 
I asked myself. Soon after, the evolution process ended. You became a hobgoblin. Beginner lightning magic has become LV4. You got the beginner's leadership skill. We've reached the end of today's episode. Thank you for traversing the boundless landscapes of fantasy with us. If today's story has sparked joy within you, please remember to hit the like button, share our journey with others, and subscribe to Lord of the Stories for an ever-expanding collection of mystical escapades. Until we meet again to turn the page to a new adventure, hold the tales dear in your heart, and let the embers of magic warmly glow in your spirit. Farewell, intrepid explorers of the narrative unknown.